Greetings, beautiful people. My name is Simon Javan Okelo. I am the host of the Madaraka podcast, and I'm also the CEO of the Madaraka Festival. We are here at the Seattle Drum School of Music uh, in Georgetown, south of downtown Seattle. And I'm incredibly privileged to be here with my brother Mujale Chisebuka, who is the CEO and founder of OST, Outside Think Creative Agency. How are you, my brother? I'm doing br pretty good, and thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. Uh, Mujale and uh, OST do a lot of wonderful work. Uh, for example, Madaraka Festival has benefited a, a lot from your work. Uh, you've, you've photographed a lot of Madaraka Festival mm -hmm. events from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've also brought a lot of your team members to Madaraka Festival mm -hmm. to help document uh, you know, the incredible artists, the community, the vendors, and uh, without the cameras being there and without you being there we would not be able to um to have madaraka festival really so i just mm -hmm. want to say thank you for your contribution to the growth of madaraka festival yeah and i'd like to also say thank you for providing that space because me personally coming from a visual art background and from a very young age drawing and painting i've always appreciated different art forms as well so being able to capture the different artists and being in that environment adds to our, my creativity as well as um, people on my team have said that it also adds to them as well. So this is one of the events that we really enjoy doing and getting to also be inspired by the performances of the people that um, are, are in the festival. That's wonderful. You know, uh, hearing you speak about your, your painting and that you started painting from a young age mm -hmm. actually just reminds me of where our conversation needs to start from. Mm. Uh, because um, uh, a lot of people are forgetting, well, even me sometimes I forget mm -hmm. how amazing you are as a painter. And a lot of the time, lately i just think of mujale the ceo of ost or mujale the photographer uh or mujale the community leader mm -hmm. but i feel like the original uh relationship that i had with you was through your work as, mm -hmm. a, as an artist as a painter mm -hmm. so speak a little more to uh where that began and w yeah. how how that has contributed to your work until this point yeah um, so I remember some of uh, my first memories is around three years old, and I remember um, watching my, my dad, he used to uh, sketch little uh, um, drawings of just the com uh, community or, or the environment, and through that I asked him for a piece of paper, and he, he um, I used to just copy his uh, drawings for a while until I started going outside and really taught me through the lens of drawing to like start actually looking at things. So um, I was started, made me look closer at birds, animals, people, and I became really fascinated and curious. So after a while of um, trying, um, watching my dad um, sketch his stuff and trying to copy him, I started telling him that, Dad, you're doing it wrong because he used, to, uh, he used to draw stick figures and then he also used to draw birds in a certain way all the time. But after a while, I was like, wait a minute, birds actually don't look like this, you know? So I started getting more detail. And then he then he, he, he makes me laugh because he goes, oh, after you turned four and you told me that I gave up my drawing skills. So um, didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to show my dad that um, there was more to the drawing than just uh, uh, stick figures. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, so through that lens, it, that's how I was able to like really um, build up my skill set is just always being observant and looking um, – the next step in drawing. So the first uh, couple of years, I was really focused on landscapes and realism, then really started focusing on people. But my progression in drawing um, went from just uh, realism to abstract to pop art, and I went through all the phases throughout my, uh, throughout my childhood and even into my teen years and my adult ages. And that's how I transitioned into photography as well. And um, I can speak on that further or um, we um, no, I want to keep you in the in the art for a moment, just mm -hmm. painting. Uh,
way to also like empower myself and the people around me. So um, I used to love it. I used to uh, draw f uh, pictures from my friends. Um, my family members used to get me to, you know, draw pictures for memory wise, you know, so they can have portraits of themselves at, at that stage in life. So um, one of the things that I did pride myself as being a historian type uh, figure with my uh, with my art, and also drawing images that empowered the people around me. Um, in my young age, I would draw f my friends and me as superheroes, and would uh, use those drawings to imagine ourselves um, in those roles. Um, one of the things I did do uh, uh, recently, um, in a more recent time. Uh, meaning my adulthood is like um, around some of the protests and, and marches. Um, I was drawing uh, pictures of uh, the community and folks um, either holding signs or really capturing that, those moments in that, um, in those, you know, and showing that empowerment. <clears throat> um, so that also, I've also done like street signs uh, that showcase um, like the historical arts district. Um, uh, in uh, c central area area, um, central district area. Uh, so being able to do street signs that empower uh, my community and folks that look like me. Um, being able to, uh, I also did recently uh, the Elizabeth Thomas Homes, which is a full building and the whole entire buildings around um, just uh, imagining and empowering residents as they come home from school, work, uh, to show figures of community, um, past, present, and future uh, in prominent um, situations where they can also look at and be inspired by those uh, and then also be able to recognize some of those figures. So some of them are not just uh, like we're used to uh, putting uh, like uh, celebrities on a pedestal, but some of these are just uh, community members doing really amazing things, and there are daily heroes, and those need to be celebrated as well. So uh, fast forward, because where I'm, I'm at now is I do incorporate, I'm gonna talk about my photography, because I incorporate that some in, into the art. So what I've done is um, taken some of the, like I take pictures of folks, and then I also like I take those, and then I, turn them into paintings that also can be incorporated into buildings. Um, I've also done a coloring book. Um, done. I've been a teacher uh, for the youth, and that's actually how I was first invited into the community is through our, our teacher. I love that. Yeah, I love so. that. So when you think about your paintings, I think one of the, your paintings that I remember is a painting of Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. Speak about that and just the process. I, I want to stay here with the painting for just mm -hmm. a second. <laughs> yeah, so that actually, uh, that painting got inspired by a series um, I did uh, called uh, Posterize. So I grew up in the 90s and uh, being posterized was a term that was used in the NBA. And that was when, for folks that don't know, that was when um, basically somebody you got dunked on or something epic happened and you're the person that got dunked on. So you, you're the person that didn't want to be that person. So with that, um, like there's images of Michael Jordan dunking over people and those people are termed or crowned posterized. So uh, through that, I, uh, when the Sonics moved away, uh, I created a, a, a piece, a, a, revenge, a revenge piece, around uh, Kevin Durant getting posterized by Sean Kemp. And then uh, um, Gary Payton is in the background, um, kind of in amazement, like, oh, why'd you do this? He's just a kid, you know, type situation. Um, so a lot of people enjoyed that, and I enjoyed that as well, because um, it showed, it, it showed uh, Sean Kemp uh, in the old school uniform, him and Gary Payton showed uh, Kevin Durant in the Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma uniforms, so uh, definitely uh, I'm a I'm a fan of Kevin Durant, but um, definitely was not a fan of the situations that they took uh, the songs away from us. So uh, uh, fast forward to the um, Muhammad Ali, I started drawing prominent um, figures in uh, either inspiration. Some of them were more of like a. a in a more of like a, a joking um, type situation. But with, uh, I use it to also like really get my friends and the people around me inspired by certain moments. And Muhammad Ali is uh, a figure of triumph in, in my life 
and a lot of the folks around me's life. So um, to see the reaction when pe people uh, uh, look at that painting and uh, and also I, I was able to give to, give to my brother and just to see the reaction when um, when folks when he when I, he received it and just when folks uh, embrace it is amazing to me. So. I love that. So uh, just one last thing in regards to your painting is uh, at Madaraka Festival, I believe it was in 2017, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you brought a painting of Uwara Runga oh, yep. and chocolate was there. I don't know if you brought a painting of chocolate too. I did, yes. Yeah. How, how uh, well, what went, w what made you do that and how did you feel when they received your paintings uh, of, 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 of you know your paintings of them mm -hmm. you know what 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 did they say and yeah it yeah. was so uh, <laughs> it was it was a humbling and uh, i felt honored just to see the way they received it you know and just to mm -hmm. uh see those uh smiles because i'm a big fan of their music um mm -hmm. so just to see um somebody that i uh admire receiving something from me and also and admiring that work and that moment ex exchanging admiration is a really, um, I have no words to describe it because it's really like, it's a great feeling and worth, it's priceless um, right. those moments. So right. uh, definitely um, that was a moment that I would not forget and keeps me inspired and keeps me doing what I do. So when you think about that moment uh, and you think about now with Madaraka Festival, and your involvement and contribution because this mm -hmm. work a lot of people say simon you've done this but i also feel like people like you have really helped bring this to where it is mm -hmm. how does it make you feel when you see where this uh, madaraka festival is today right um it inspires me because it makes me feel growth you know and really um creating that uh pipeline of, is uh you know we're, we've come such a long way from the beginning, um, and I feel like we're growing, but not only just growing, but we're creating something where people, uh, youth behind us are coming along and they can grow at a faster pace and hopefully get even further than we did. Um, because something like the Madaraka Festival was not around, you know, um, when I was growing up. And just to have that kind of uh, those opportunities be presented in the community um, is something that is important and have seen some of the youth come behind and they're now being able to be mentored by you, myself and other folks that have been in those experiences. And now they're starting to get their own experiences so that way they can take it to the next level. I love that. I love that. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about Maraca Festival, also uh, one of the things that actually help with the growth is photography and at mm -hmm. the beginning i was speaking about your you, you know your team and your effort helping us document and tell the story and grow it um uh when you look at the pictures you've taken at madaraka festival mm -hmm. can you speak about your favorite picture and yeah. also speak to how this is connected to why you you are a photographer you know yeah um so I'll say my uh, a lot. Of my first pictures are probably my first year um, around even. Um, oh, where was it in, in in that one with? And he was performing with Macklemore at that time, mm -hmm. and just to see the um, excitement, um, just because a little about even Or and um, Macklemore as well is. I used to we used to go to this place called the Fair Gallery Cafe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just to see, and they and Or was a regular there, and um, just to see his growth and um, from him to uh, him and Macklemore uh, performing there to uh, going to world uh, stages was amazing to me, and right. just to even be there to capture those moments again and comes full circle to like. Um, it took me back to yeah to those uh, days at the Fair Gallery Cafe. So that was some of my favorite images that I captured at the first Mount Araka festival there. Um, that other festival, you know, where a chocolate was there and Or was there again, um, was also a, a great uh, festival to capture because really saw uh, women empowerment you know, uh, at that one and uh, just to see prominent black women just take the stage and just um, own it, it was amazing to me and just to be part of capturing that was um, something that um, I felt was historical and uh, powerful. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. I, oh. Go ahead. 
Yeah, and I guess just to speak to um, how uh, my paintings uh, interact with my photography. So um, around the time when I was uh, exploring my own, uh, trying to do my um, painting full time as an artist, pursuing that uh, out of school, um, I found that uh, I couldn't really find any photographers to take uh, pictures of my work at that point. Um, so uh, I was like, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to learn how to do the photo video thing and really learn how to market myself so that way I can take pictures of my paintings and, um, yeah, and grow. So after doing, uh, going back to school and doing that, I learned that there was a lot of my friends that also needed photo work as well. Um, so with that, I was able to not only take pictures of my own um, paintings at the time, I was able to do it with my uh, for my friends and my community as well. And then uh, through that um, work also, started hearing folks describe some of my work as histor like I'm a historian, um, promoting, uh, empowering. And when I, when I started hearing those words um, around that, I was like, all right, that's how we take it to the next level that way. Um, so through that, um, that's why even Full Circle coming back around now as I'm even painting some of these uh, paintings that I do is it comes from me, even some of the images I've shot. So it could be like my next series could be around uh, musicians or uh, things of that nature. And then again, like I did with uh, uh, with uh, Chocolate and Noir and some of those other folks is like, um, those were from photographs and then they were turned into paintings as well. So um, that's how it co like intertwines together yeah, so yeah. i love that uh you know being being in seattle uh, and being in america and also this show uh you know being on youtube and uh digital platforms many people from africa are also watching it mm -hmm. and i wanted you to just take us on a journey about how it feels uh, to be here in America while mm -hmm. you are also Zambian, you know, mm -hmm. um, and uh, talk about what you miss the most about uh, the motherland, right? And, uh, and 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 also just how living far away from home also impacts family, mm -hmm. impacts Im impacts even your creativity, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, speak to that. Yeah. So um, again, going back to my when I was younger, um, one of the things I did love to do was yeah going outside and taking and drawing the environment around me from animals to like uh, um, trees, things of that nature. Uh, when the movie Black Panther came out a couple of years ago, there was that scene then where he goes uh, like, "Take me to the sunset," you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so Zambia is really known for their sunset, and that's really um, how and how beautiful it is and amazing. So with that too, that's actually a, uh, one of the things that I re really used to love when I was a kid is like drawing the sunset. And just so some of my memories, early childhood memories, are sitting outside and just staring at the sunset and drawing things around it. So I miss miss that sunset, and I'm looking forward to going back and drawing that again. Um, and then also like, um, like using my imagination too. So um, as I got more advanced in my drawing, I used to start drawing from imagination, imagining things I wanted to be. Um, as I said before, with uh, now watching cartoons and then imagine myself as superheroes. So now putting myself into those sceneries and environments and making myself be a hero in those was always something that um, empowered me. And then also with that, again, um, having now my friends and family now be put into those drawings um, as figures as well um, was something that I did, not really knowing it back then, but something I did for, to empower them as well. Um, yeah, so that's where uh, the journey, and then coming here into the U.S. Um, and really going through, um, I remember kindergarten, um, a couple of friends, um, and even first grade, um, I used to have this one friend that like he used to uh, bribe me. So like he used to be like, Majal, if you draw, if you like, uh, if you draw my picture, like I'll let you come up and we'll play video games, you know. So like little things like that. So. Uh, for, for a while, he like had a, like a collection of a bunch of my art back then. So, um, so just even having that kind of early uh, impact on uh, friends was really cool around then. Then even having people like my aunt buy uh, pictures from me was uh, something that was has always stuck with me. And 
with that too, that's why a lot of it, because uh, my mom was like, how do you remember a lot of this stuff, you know, as a young age? But I had really had nothing new but draw, you know, and I like really I'd focus, you know. So I would say like, you know, um, I could spend days upon days, you know, just drawing and the time would fly for me. So with that, um, I think that's how I was able to retain memory of some of these um, moments in my younger days. Yeah, I mean, I love that. So uh, one one thing about Zambia that I want to bring up is that Kamala Harris also grew up in Zambia, just mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, how do you feel about, uh, you know, growing up in the same place as the U.S. vice president? I mean, that just, because uh, also didn't, that, and then that's where they also shot uh, Black Panther too, right? That uh, was based out of there. Yeah. So um, even, because that's, again, going back to the sunset. So there's a lot of connections to how, um, beautiful Zambia of a place Zambia is and how rich it is. So um, I'm not surprised that she, you know, a person like that should be coming out of there. <laughs> so, I love that. I yeah, love that. So. so then uh, speak to us about OST, you know, because this is your 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 baby, your, your creative agency, mm -hmm. and you're creating employment for a lot of creatives in Seattle. Uh, why did you start OST, uh, Outside mm -hmm. Think Agency? Uh, and for those who are just joining us, my name is Simon Javan Okelo. I am here with the CEO of OST, Outside Think Creative Agency, which is one of the biggest, uh, you know, companies here in Seattle that have been helping me with the growth of the Madaraka Festival through photography and uh, also marketing. And mm -hmm. he does that for multiple other organizations. So I just uh, wanted to have this conversation with him briefly for the podcast uh, and make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below so that we know how our conversation today is making you feel. Mm -hmm. So Mujali, speak about OST and uh, highlight some of the work you're doing in the community, including with Africa Town. Yeah, so um, yeah, speaking of that, um, one of the, one of the um, ways, uh, techniques I use for drawing and painting is um, layering. So, um, yeah, I'll start with the foundation, um, and then I will like I add onto that foundation, and then with that, then the details come on top of that. So those are more and more layers. So that's even um, when I think about you know the way I do my drawing is kind of the same way I do uh, with like uh, photography as well. It start from a foundation, then add layers on top of that. So with um, even the the way I've been growing and outside, I think was a natural progression of that. Um, coming from my history as an artist, and then also um, seeing the need of myself and the community, um, was able to now um, create these uh, services, you know, from photography and video, and did it a long time as a, uh, as a freelancer, and even from using my art skills to help with uh, album cover art, um, doing photography for folks, anything from headshots to even shows, um, and then video the same as well, um, just that. So um, that the next progression of it was, all right, I'm getting too much, uh, I guess, work around here. So I need to have a team around me uh, who's an artist, talented as well, um, that's trying to come up, that can benefit from working with me. And how can we partner now to help the community? So with that, that's how the idea of Outside Think was. And Outside Think, stands for thinking outside the box um, because imagination and creation cannot be contained inside a box. So it, with that model, we really uh, approach trying to challenge the norm and um, and also but set a standard. Um, so that's where uh, we're at. It's like, how do we set this uh, expectation? And then, uh, and then after that, it's challenge and keep growing that way. So with that, um, was working the the main uh, part of it was we work with a lot of artists. So it's kind of like a for artists, by artists at the beginning. Um, and then like through the growth of like, um, we started realizing seeing the artists in like all types of um, uh, industries. So for example, like um, if you are like uh, starting a baking company, um, there's, a, there's a time when you, you know, you're grinding and then you almost, when you master it, you'll become an artist of that, uh, that craft. So with that, um, really, uh, we started um, reaching into entrepreneurship and working with a lot of entrepreneurs. So professionals, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and really, um, and then from the progress where we got to at this point now is we were saying that um, 
you got to be a brand. So we do, we don't we see you. You got to see yourself not just an artist um, or a business owner, but you got to see yourself as a brand. And how do you grow in that? So um, with that, um, that's how at this day and age we have we move with the model. We build brands, and uh, any anybody from a musician that's starting to come up to uh, somebody that wants to build a big business on computers or AI or whatever or marketing. Um, we, um, if you see yourself as a brand that we can help um, build you. So yeah, that's been the natural, uh, the progression of things. So really just laying on top of things and seeing where it goes from there. Right. Um, so I know that some of your clients include Seattle U, Seattle University, mm-hmm. Africa Town. Uh, speak to, you know, as an artist or a photographer or a creative or a business owner, you only see the real value of your business when somebody starts putting money behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. So speak to who are the people who are putting money behind uh, OST. And and then from there, as we are coming close to our conversation, I also want to think, uh, I want you to think about three tips that you can give people who are watching our conversation today, especially uh, people lately have been asking me, Simon, you've been doing Madaraka Festival for 10 years. How have you done it? And part of me answering that question is talking to my guests like you okay. who have been to so many events, you know, mm-hmm. so that you can give three tips, you know, so you look at this camera on this side and give those three tips. But for now, just speak to who are your favorite clients. Yeah. And it's not necessarily like uh, the word money, but it's more of a, I look at it in terms of value and right. value creation. So um, with some of these, um, uh, some of these clients, or we call them brands, um, uh, part of the partnerships is like, how can we strategic, how do we align? And seeing a lot of these alignments is how we move. So um, even in our uh, the brands that we work with, there's some that you know around uh, building around healthcare and empowerment, and that's where like. Me personally, um, growing up in a uh, healthcare that um, was not necessarily built for uh, for myself uh, or pe- people like me, um, trying to look for healthcare. How, how do I empower? How do I get to a place where um, I can be empowered to go to the, and feel comfortable? Um, so that's where some of the organizations reached out. Like so, Tubman Health is an organization that um, we've uh, worked with uh, in terms of even helping promote and tell their story. Um, Seattle University, there's uh, a couple of uh, projects we've worked around, like equity for uh, for youth and, and math and learning. Um, Africa Town is one thing, uh, one uh, organization that's really close to me because um, that's one of the first brands I really uh, helped and worked with. And um, even with uh, when uh, Y King came with the um, the phrase like Imagine Africa Town, it really set a, a, a pace for somebody like me to even imagine what it felt, uh, what it was because at that point it didn't it wasn't a physical place you know it was um, something that we had to imagine and we had to um, bring it into reality so with that um, so an artist like me got me to be sketching and even with the creating the logo like he was uh, there was a lot of like prompting and imagining around that's like what could it be and different how could it live in different places and what are the people when they come to Africa Town? How are they going? What are they going to be eating? How are they going to be empowered? Um, so really, in that, um, I saw alignment, and that's why I've seen a lot of the, the brands that I've been working with is not just a one-off. It's but it's like how do we create something that's um, intergenerational? How do we create pipelines and something that uh, something that takes me ten years to do? How do we create a system that it takes people coming behind me five years to do? and they're successful and thriving. Um, so that's a lot of like uh, why I see the value. So beyond our monetary, um, it's also like, how would you create that generation for and build that um, place for our community? That's wonderful, mm. that's wonderful. Uh, speak to the three tips that you could give someone who is organizing an event like Madaraka Festival. You should look at that camera. Okay, so um, I guess in terms of the three tips, I would say, I will just put it in this way, pre-production, production, and post-production. So think about your why. Um, 
what's the, on your end outcome of this in the in your pre-production phase and that would also help you in your production and help you in your post as well so when you think about production you think about um operations how many uh how many people are, how many people does it take to run it um what is the whole entire like day of and then when you think of post, you're thinking about how you're going to edit it and what's the message you're trying to tell that you're going to be able to create content to keep it moving forward for um, past that one event and moving on for hopefully forever. Um, so yeah, pre-production, production, and post. And also the, with that very last thing is when you're creating, like where's the platform? What's the, who are you trying to reach in that? So um, as long as you have uh, the pre-production, production and post-production and who you're trying to reach and the why, uh, that should be the foundation of, um, of any event. So also mm -hmm. look at that camera and mm -hmm. just tell our audiences, uh, say this. I am Ujali Chisebuka, and you're watching Madaraka Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Ujali Chisebuka, and you're watching Madaraka uh, Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> Don't miss it out. Don't miss out. <laughs> I love that. So what are your closing comments? Let's value ourselves and value the people around us, and let's build. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Madaraka podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's really been wonderful having uh, the CEO of OST, my brother Mujali, who is truly, truly gifted. Uh, you know, he's, an, he's a painter, he's a photographer, he's a videographer, and he's a, he's a business owner too. So uh, make sure you look in the description of this video to learn more about the amazing work that he's doing. Thank you so much. Peace. Mm -hmm.